welcome back to my channel i hope you are having a great day today we're going to be talking about the rational zeros theorem it sounds complicated but it's really not that complicated what the rational zeros theorem is it gives you a way to find all the possible rational zeros of a polynomial function and so the rational zeros theorem it's a long drawn out theorem matter of fact i gotta look at my notebook to read it to you so this is what it says. I'm gonna tell you the formal definition of it and then I'm gonna break it down and basically tell you what it means. So if P over Q is a rational number written in lowest terms and if P over Q is a zero of F, which is a polynomial with only integer coefficients, then P is a factor of the constant term and Q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Now that's the formal definition for the rational zeros theorem. But actually what that says is that if you have a polynomial you can look at the constant term, take all the factors of the constant term, look at the leading coefficient, take all the factors of the leading coefficient, then take every possible fraction of those factors, the leading coefficient or the constant term of the leading coefficient, every possible fraction you can make and that'll give you all of your possible zeros, okay? So let's look at an example and see how that works. All right, and for this first example for the rational zeros, then we want to list all the possible rational zeros of this function. f of x equals 6x to the fourth plus 7x to the third minus 12x squared minus 3x plus 2. So that's a polynomial function. We want to know what are all the possible zeros, and this is the first part. We're going to find all of the possible zeros, and then for the second part, we're going to figure out which one of those are actually zeros. So to start off, what you want to do is find all of your p's. So remember p in that rational zeros theorem are all the factors of the constant term. So those are the factors of the constant term. So the constant term is two. So you want to find all the numbers that can multiply to give you two. And the only numbers that multiply to give you two are one and two. But you have to take plus and minus those numbers. So why am I putting plus or minus? Because negative one times negative two is a positive two. And um, positive one times positive two is also a positive two. So you have to consider both the positive and negative of those values. Then you have to find Q. Q is all of the factors of the leading coefficient. So remember the leading coefficient is the coefficient in, in front of the term with the biggest exponent. The biggest exponent here is four. The number in front of the four is the six. So your leading coefficient would be six. So your Q is gonna be all of the factors of six. Well, what numbers multiply to give you six? One and six give you six. And remember you have to take the plus or minus of those but also two times three give you six. So that's why I left space in there because I knew that two and three were also factors of six and I wanna write them in order. So these are my P's and these are my Q's. And so now to find every possible rational zero, I wanna take every possible fraction of P over Q. So that means I wanna take each of these and write it over each of these. The easiest way to do that, well for me, this is my, um, this is my uh, preference, is to take the first P and write it over each of the Q's. Then take the second P and write it over each of the Q's. So this would be plus or minus one over one, plus or minus one over two. So one over one, one over two, one over three, and then one over six. Plus or minus one over three, and then plus or minus one over six. So I wrote this P over all of these Q's. Now I'm gonna write this P over each of these Q's. So two over one, two over two, two over three, and two over six. And remember it's plus and minus each of those. Now, I have to go through the fractions and reduce them. So the only ones that reduce, so one over one, so, all, so here are your um, possible zeros. One over one reduces to one. One over two, that's still one over two. It reduces, I mean, it can't be reduced. It's just one over two. One over three is one over three, can't be reduced. One over six is one over six, can't be reduced. Two over one reduces to two. <clears throat> two over two reduces to one, but we already have one, so I could cross that out because it's already taken care of. Two over three cannot be reduced. And two over six reduces to one over three and one over three we already have. So I could cross that one out because it's already taken care of. So these are all of your possible zeros. Remember this is 
two numbers. That's positive one and negative one. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve possible zeros. So that's how you would go through, use the rational zeros theorem to find all of your possible zeros. Alrighty. <clears throat> now the second part of this is we want to take these zeros and figure out which one of these are actually zeros. So in order to do that, we need to take each of these zeros, plug them into the function and see if we get out zero. That's one way to do it. Cause remember it's a zero if f of k equals zero. The other way to do it is we can use synthetic division with each of these numbers. So we want to check and see which of these are zero. So let's go and do that for part two. So for the second part of this example, we want to find all the rational zeros of f of x, where f of x is equal to 6x to the fourth plus 7x to the third minus 12x squared minus 3x plus 2. The same function as on part one. We found, and we want to find those zeros. We want to factor in the linear factor. So. <clears throat> We want to start with the possible zeros. So we found this in part one. These are all the possible zeros. And I told you before we could test these by plugging those numbers into the function and seeing if you get zero or we can do synthetic division. I like to use synthetic division because it tells you what the other remaining factors of the um, polynomial is. So I'm just going to start with the, I wrote all of my non-fractions first, my integers. So I'm going to start with the integers. I'm going to start with one. So I'm going to use synthetic division with k equal to 1. My coefficients are 6, 7, negative 12, negative 3, and 2. Drop the 6 down. 1 times 6 is 6. 7 plus 6 is 13. 1 times 13 is 13. Negative 12 plus 13 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. Since the remainder comes out to be 0, that means that one is a zero. So we have one of our zeros. One of our zeros so far is one. I'm gonna get a different color and circle it. So this is blue. That means that's one of our zeros, okay? So since one is a zero, then we know by the factor theorem now that x minus one is a factor. And then this lets me know, since it was a fourth degree polynomial, you drop down one degree. That means the remaining factor is six x to the third plus 13x squared, that's a 13, plus 13x squared, plus x minus two. So that's the remaining factor. So this is a factor. This is one way to factor this polynomial, but it wants all of our factors to be linear. So that means we need to keep breaking this down to get all linear factors. So now I'm gonna test negative one. But this time when I test negative one, I'm only gonna test it on this quotient right here. So I'm gonna use these coefficients, six, 13, one, and negative two. So I'll start by dropping the six down. Negative one times six is negative six. 13 minus six is seven. Negative one times seven is negative seven. One plus negative seven is negative six. And negative one times negative six is positive six. Add those together and you get a four. Since that remainder is not zero, that means that negative one is not a zero of the polynomial. So now I'll go to the next number, which is two, and I'm gonna still use these same coefficients here because I didn't find a zero. If this would've came out to be a zero, then I'll use that bottom row. So I'll, I also didn't say that. These numbers came from this bottom row down here, 613, one, and negative two. So I'll use those coefficients again, but this time with a K value of two, and that's the next number in my list. So six, 13, one, and negative two. Drop the six down. Two times six is 12. 13 plus 12 is 25. Two times 25 is 50. One plus 50 is 51. Two times 51 is 102. And then that is uh, 100. That does not have a remainder of zero. So therefore that is not two is not a zero of the function. I've checked one, negative one, and two, and two is not a zero of the function, so I'll go to the next number, which is negative two. So I'm using this same row, this same row, because I haven't found another zero yet, but this time my k will be negative two. So six, 13, one, and negative two. Those are the same coefficients I wanna use. I wanna drop the six down. That's negative 12, 13 minus 12 is one. That's negative two. One plus negative two is negative one. Negative two times negative one is a positive two. Negative two plus two is zero. 
So that means negative two is also a zero. So that means I found a second zero. So one and negative two is, are my zero. So now what this tells me is what the other remaining factor is, six, one and negative one. So we went from a fourth degree polynomial to this result being a third degree polynomial. So now this result will be a second degree polynomial. So I'm gonna erase this so that I can use this space right here. Oops, I wasn't trying to erase all of that. But, so we know that one is a zero. So because one is a zero, then X minus one is a factor. Because negative two is a zero, then X minus negative two is also a factor. And then this tells us the remaining factor, six X squared plus X minus one. Alrighty. The X minus a negative two becomes a positive two and then this is 6x squared plus x minus 1 now we're still not finished because it told us to factor it into linear factors which means we still need to continue to break this polynomial expression down this is the quadratic down until we get it into linear factors so the way we do that is we'll factor this so we could keep going through the list so now we'll be going through it and testing fractions but because we know how to factor a quadratic we're going to actually just factor this out so I'm gonna erase this over here so I can use this space. And so how do I factor six X squared plus X minus one? I multiply the A and the C, that's six times negative one. Six times negative one is negative six. So I want factors of negative six that add to positive one. The positive one comes from the middle term, the B term. So what are two numbers that multiply to give you negative six and add to give you positive one? Um, three times negative two. Three times negative two is negative six and three minus two is one. So that means this will factor into x plus three, x minus two, but because there was a number in front, you have to divide each of those numbers by six. So this will reduce to x plus one half, because three over six reduces to one half, and this one would reduce to x minus one third. And as mentioned in a previous video, if you're using my math lab by Pearson, although this is still technically correct, you can not leave it with the fraction. So what you have to do is take this denominator and move it in front of the um, coefficient. So this becomes two x plus one, and this becomes 3x minus 1. So now your factors are x minus 1, x plus 2, 2x plus 1, and 3x minus 1. That is how you would factor this polynomial down, this one right here, down into linear factors. Now, what are your zeros? Your zeros are 1 negative two, the opposite of this. So your zeros are one, negative two. We found those from doing the synthetic division. And then these give you a zero. If you was to take this and set it equal to zero, x plus one half equals zero. Solve for x, it will be negative one half. So it's the opposite of this, so negative one half. So that gives you a zero, a negative one half, and this would give you a zero, a positive one third. So those would be your four zeros one, negative two, negative one half, and one third, and then this is how you will factor the polynomial down into linear factors. Okay, so I know we only worked one example in this problem, and although it had two parts, it was still just one example um, in this video, I mean, and it is a lot, right? But if you just take it and break it down step by step, you could do it. Before I let you go, I want you to try just one part of what we did on your own and so i have a function here f of x equal x to the third minus 2x squared minus 13x minus 10. i want you to see if you can find all of the possible rational zeros so you're going to use the rational zeros theorem to find all the possible rational zeros so pause the video for a moment and see if you can get it so did you get plus or minus one plus or minus two plus or minus five and plus or minus ten if you got that then you are correct so if you got that and you understand it, then thank you for watching. Um, if this video helped you in any kind of way, make sure you hit the like button. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, show some love. 
if um and i'll see you in the next video but if you didn't get that i'll walk you through it really quick so you can hang around and see how to work this problem Alrighty. so you should have started with p list all the factors of the constant term which is negative 10. so that's plus or minus one plus or minus two plus or minus five and plus or minus ten then you should have listed all the factors of q which is the leading coefficient which is just one. So there's an understood one right there. So the only one would be plus or minus one. So then you will write each of these P's of each of these Q's, which ends up giving you one over one, two over one, five over one, 10 over one. And remember it's the plus and minus of each of those. And those just simplify to one, two, five, and 10. So this one was actually a little bit easier because your leading coefficient was one. But if you could go through the process, regardless of what your leading coefficient is or your confidence is, you will always be able to find all the possible rational zeros. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.